Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is now in North Korea. He is uh, preparing for the president's planned meeting with leader Kim Jong-un. Pompeo quietly made his second visit to the country as the president decided to withdraw the United States from the Iranian nuclear deal. A time, date, and location for Kim and President Trump to meet has been set up, but not yet released to the public. A square in Jerusalem near the new U.S. Embassy will be named after President Trump, Jerusalem's mayor announcing the official name. United States Square in honor of President Donald Trump. That square and the new embassy opens next Monday. Joining me now, Fox Business foreign policy analyst, terrorism expert, Dr. Waleed Ferris. Waleed, great to have you with us. Thank uh, you. Let's start with first the first development, and that is the president's decision to withdraw the United States from the the worst deal the president is, he's often said, mm. uh, ever in his uh, lifetime, uh, the Iranian-Obama deal. Your reaction? Lou, what President Trump has done today is historic. He actually changed live on TV uh, U.S. foreign policy in a very different strategic direction. Number one, and that was the most important, and the public needs to understand that, we have stopped now paying Iran. We have st stopped sending and transferring money to Iran. And the Iranian regime was using that money of the Iran deal to purchase weapons from Russia, including anti-aircraft, anti-missile. And also, he sent a very strong message, that's the president, to the region, to the Gulf, to, Air to Saudi Arabia, UAE, mm -hmm. Egypt, everybody else. To that the world. To the world, of course, after that, that he is standing with the region against this expansionism of Iran. But... There is something else, the third one. He's sending a message to the Europeans. He's telling right. them, okay, you want to do business with Iran? Go ahead and do it. I have partners in the region. We're going to go in a direction. It's up to you to decide, American economy or Iranian economy. And uh, the, the president uh, making this decision against the, uh, the, the council of uh, French President Macron, Angela Merkel of Germany, uh, and today... Uh, oh, of course, Secretary of State Kerry. Did I neglect to mention uh, his name, Walid? Uh, today, the, pres the former president, Barack Obama, saying that the president, uh, President Trump, is making a terrible mistake. Uh, this, this from a man who uh, created the deal, uh, and which, by the way, I can still find no benefit whatsoever to the United States. Can you? We were going in a very wrong decision strategically and historically. I mean, look, between signing the deal and now getting out of it, what did Iran achieve? It is controlling Iraq. It's controlling Syria. It's controlling now Lebanon with Hezbollah. Of course, it's fighting in Yemen. The largest web of terror networks on three continents. These were the achievements of the deal that the previous administration has basically been the architect of. Now, our allies in Europe, they understand that. The problem is that their companies have already invested with the Iran deal. That's why they are concerned. So some language in what the, uh, the statements of the president, you know, are kind of a message to them. Look, we'll give you six months. We'll give you some time. Come be with us in our coalition in the region rather than being stuck with, uh, with an Iran that's going to become nuclear anyway and is terrorist anyway. And let's turn to North Korea itself. It appears that the, uh, the president and Kim Jong-un are on the verge of uh, hitting whatever the mark is that they've set, uh, which will guide both of them to a, a negotiating table face to face uh, at uh, some undisclosed location and time. Uh, your thoughts on the likelihood now is that we've seen so much progress in the preparation and the lead up to such a meeting. Uh, what do you think? Will it happen? Lou, uh, the way this whole thing happened over, over the past few months, it started with North Korea lobbying missiles all the way to close to our national shores or at least national uh, you know, islands in the Pacific to now the possibility that North Korea is massively changing its policies, its strategies, mm -hmm. potentially disarming. And this whole thing started because the administration sent a strong message deploying the task forces, speaking mm -hmm. very clearly with the Chinese. North Koreans spoke with the Chinese and understood they were completely isolated. So I do believe that there will be a summit between our president and the leadership of North Korea and that North Korea is on its way to change if we maintain the pressure. It's And the fact that this president, has been so successful in building a relationship 
uh, with President Xi Jinping of China uh, has played an important part uh, in that uh, at a time when nearly every one of his critics, which are, it seems, limitless uh, until he uh, uh, rams success down their throats, uh, it now appears that that relationship with Xi that he developed is also a critical component of uh, the success that he's building, uh, frankly, globally in the Trump doctrine. It's true. For example, uh, the president understood that China has changed. I mean, North Korea was still in the Cold War. China basically, though still a communist regime, has moved to becoming an economic global power. So yeah. doing a balance of power economically with China is one thing, but agreeing with them on making sure that nothing should destabilize the world economy is the plus, is the victory. And throughout it all, the president reminding everyone, we'll see. Dr. Waleed Ferris, thanks for being with us. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you.